Hello. How is everybody doing? It's time uh, for art. I hope you all came prepared. Because uh, today we are going to be looking at the figure. <laughs> um, so let's see here. Uh, before we <laughs> hell yes, hello, hello. Uh, before we get started here, let me go ahead and let's go through this. So I just wanted to go through uh, what my goals are with this series. Um, this is meant to be like a, a kind of a, a, a self self help for um, people that want to get started in VTubing and don't even have a model yet. <laughs> yes, honey. <laughs> no, not Aswang. Aswang. <laughs> but um, yeah. Um, so basically my goal with this is I want to be, I want to teach others, uh, illustration basics so they're able to make good quality references and or their own live 2D model. Or if you want, you can also just do this for fun. Uh, let's see. So, so basically I'm going to be focusing mostly on drawing the figure, uh, yeah, mostly on drawing the figure, um, illustration and uh color color theory so you can make a really sharp looking sharp looking character um before we start this is just going to be some uh self-reflection yes hello hello that's great i'm glad, glad to hear people want to start drawing for fun <laughs> um but before we start uh Everyone has different ways of approaching art. Um, so my my method might not be like, oh, my mouth's, okay, there we go. <laughs> uh, everybody might be different than how I approach art. So if there's a certain way that you want to um, approach something that's different than mine, uh, I mean, feel free to explore that. Uh, let's see here. Um, don't be discouraged if your pieces don't look like someone else's. Like I said, everybody um, approaches art differently. Uh, it just, you don't need to compare yourself to others. Otherwise, uh, you just get discouraged. Um, let's see. Your style is unique to you. So think about your influence, influences and what you ultimately want to go for. Uh, if I'm not sure if this... Uh, <laughs> if this is visible on my model, but um, I was very influenced by uh, Studio Trigger, a um, bunch of mishmash of different artists, uh, mostly <laughs> mostly anime stuff. Um, yeah, everybody grows differently too, so um, some people might be evolving at a different rate than you. Yeah, art styles constantly ev uh, evolve, so some people might stagnate for a little bit trying to figure out what they're trying to do or some people uh they they mix it up like almost every day <laughs> um i usually like to keep <laughs> i know I, I usually like to keep things um interesting while also trying to maintain a consistent style um, but nothing's stopping you from from uh from experimenting if you need to um like I said, uh, I'm not really an authority on art. On art. I'm not like, I don't like have a, a, a PhD or anything. Uh, I have taken a couple of classes. Uh, I've been drawing since I was a kid, so you just pick up uh, things as you go. Um, but this is basically how, uh, how do I put this? I'm going to show you how I would like to, how I approach art uh, in some of the basic fundamentals. Um, just to get you started. Alrighty. So, before, before we start... <laughs> yes, I only have a PhD in kicking ass. Before, before we start, um, don't be like me. I'm not a very good role model. Uh, you always want to start doing your stretches. Uh, this is a very helpful ch chart um, by Bruder Caitlin. These are stretches 
for your wrist and hands. Uh, this is so you, uh, this prevents you from having uh, muscle, muscle and bone uh, problems in the future. Uh, I don't always remember to do them, but I remember to do them uh, whenever possible. Where do we teach this PhD? I'm interested. Uh, you get it uh, after you have kicked a certain amount of asses. Let's see. So, um, first of all, uh, let's start with our stretches, actually. So, we'll do the wrist, wrist stretches first. This is just so you guys don't have any issues in the long run. Like I do, where my wrist starts cramping up for a while. <laughs> Thank you, I did that one. Um, so, we'll start with the wrist extension. So, just um, extend your arm out all the way. Uh, and then you'll want to have one hand. I usually just do this on my drawing hand, but you can do this on both arms if you want to. Um, with your palm facing out, and then you'll want to, like, in this chart, stretch your hand backwards ever so slightly just so you can feel the tendon stretching, and then just release, and then do it one more time and release and then you're good and then now we're gonna do the uh, wrist flexion um, basically the same thing but just upside down so arm extended hand uh, pointing downward palm facing you and then just stretch that arm or the hand towards you so you can feel uh, feel those tendons stretching and then release and then stretch it again and then release and then next is the wrist extension. So this is palm facing outward. Uh, hello, bargain. Uh, next is palm, uh, arm extended par palm, <laughs> palm facing outward. And then you just want to stretch that towards you and then let it rest and then stretch towards you one more time and let it go. Perfect. Um, you can also do a bunch more, uh, let's see, I'm not gonna do the wall stretch, just cause I don't have a wall near me. How many times do you keep the stretch? Uh, usually I like to hold it for at least three seconds and then releasing. Uh, I feel like you get the best stretch then. Uh, and then I, I like to do it twice, at least. Uh, and then we are also going to do this palm, uh, palms pushed together. So just like in the chart, you just want to start with your fingertips uh, lightly touching each other. And then you want to start pushing your hands together and then uh, moving your arms slowly down. And then you can feel your wrist stretching that way. And then just... Uh, as soon as it gets to like the most stretched part, just keep it for like uh, three or four seconds and then you can let go. And then once you're done with that, just shake your hands out. Uh, and then I have a couple of other extra stretches that I like to do. Um, let's see here. Neck is really important. Um, just roll the neck just so it's not locked in place. And then also twisting your torso is very important. So go ahead. And I like these ones because you can do them sitting down. And then you can hear my bones popping. So that's great, my, my old man bones. And then you can also, uh, if you want to uh, stretch and touch your toes, but I don't feel like getting up right now. <laughs> <clears throat> But yeah, just do a couple of passes of those and then you should be good to go. And then a couple of reminders is please stay hydrated while you are drawing. Uh, you just don't want to, you want to get dehydrated because it's very easy to forget once you're in the zone. Um, and also, please piss if you need to. Don't hold it in like I do. Uh, it's just not very good for your body. <laughs> like I said, um, once you get and once you get like super into drawing and what you're doing and super focused on what you're doing 
um, you you will get lost in the sauce. I believe it's called flow, and sometimes you'll just forget to use the bathroom. <laughs> but sometimes I do that, so don't be like me. <laughs> yes sir, yes sir. Uh, and also another extra tip. I know I didn't write it down here, um, but you want to try to hold whatever utensil you're using uh, with as little grip as you can just so you don't stress out that muscle. Um, and also, if possible, try to draw with your entire arm. Um, it'll take the tension off of um, just your wrist and, also, and lessen the chance that you get like carpal tunnel or anything like that. <laughs> do what I tell you, not what I do exactly, exactly. So now, we're gonna get into the actual drawing. Uh, I am going to show you how to properly look at the figure and how to assess how to uh, how to approach drawing it. Um, let's see here. So first, we are going to start with the human figure. Um, I tend to start with female bodies. Uh, I don't know. It, this is just a, fe uh, a personal preference, but I think that drawing females uh, or feminine figures are just much more easier for me. Um, so all these photos that I have are from <laughs> Google Photo <Photobody> Body Review. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, all of these figures, all these um, pictures are from Senshi Stock, which is a wonderful resource uh, for poses and um, warm-up drawings if you ever need them. <laughs> It is. Um, so I picked out uh, some f photos that have uh, what is called uh, contrapposto poses, which is basically when you see this, when the shoulders and the waist are at odds with each other. So um, one is pointing downwards, the other is pointing upwards at it. Uh, so there's a nice uh, twist to the body uh, and a just a really nice shape. Um, so approaching this is fairly easy. What you want to look for is the line of action. And the line of action is just the line that the body, is, uh, the body pose is following. Uh, so with this here, uh, usually what's uh, really easy to look out for is the position of the spine. Um, I have a really good picture of this over here. Let me see if I can find it. Yeah, so you'll want uh, one really easy way to find the line of action is to follow the spine. Uh, you can see it really distinctly here. Um, you just follow this here and that's gonna be your line of action for this, fo uh, for this photo at least. Um, so you just follow that and honestly you just build off of that, uh, get your shoulder direction, get your hip direction, and then you can start building, uh, building your figure off of there. Um, so when doing this, you don't want to worry yourself with like the meaty fleshy part. You, you absolutely don't want to focus on that. Uh, the rougher, the better. You, you, you don't want to be... Uh, you don't want to think about it too much at this stage. Right now, you're just trying to get the um, the motion and the position of the body. And then once you get that down, then you can start getting into the meteor stuff. Uh, so we're going to start with this first image here. Um, for So for right now, you don't... I, I wouldn't want to worry about like the arms... Uh, yeah, don't don't worry about the arms. Arms are like second, secondary. <laughs> oh, what's up, Alma? I'll teach you about the meat later. <laughs> the meaty, fleshy part. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, no. But seriously, yeah, you don't want to worry about these. Fuck arms. That's what I'm saying. Fuck arms right now. You want to get the cylinder part down. So going off of this photo, 
Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do it in like pink. Yeah, we're doing pink. It's called nice cute color. So let's see here. So if I'm looking at this picture, I see that this is the line of motion. It's more of like a curve here. Um, so I'm just gonna start with that curve that I see. Um, so let's see. There. And that is the foundation. That, that's everything you need. Arms are for the weak. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Book arms is easy. Right? Uh, so, so off of the line of action here, um, I would build up the shoulder and waistline. Uh, I'm more of a leg man too. I really like legs and also ass. Uh, so also, uh, so the shoulder and the waist. So the shoulder I can see is going this way. So just quick line like that and I'm also paying attention to the rib cage um, the rib cage is also going to be a very helpful indicator for you to see how the pose is going so this rib cage is going up like this I can tell that the person is going like upward uh, so and then also with this you can tell like the spacing between so <laughs> yes I'm, <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad I I, I would love I love it I love to uh, help people out and achieve their own dreams uh, of I don't know doing stuff I, I I am a firm believer of if you can make it yourself don't bother buying it <laughs> although if you do want to support artists uh, and you do want to uh, purchase a model for yourself. That is also good and uh, I, I deeply respect that because our, being an artist nowadays is kind of tough. <laughs> Very tough. Um, but where was I? Uh, yes, so the rib cage is going to be a bend inward like this. Uh, so you can tell here the, the length on the left here is shorter so I have that as well and the length on the right is much longer um, and then going from the hip line uh, you can tell that there's not too much of a space right here so I'll just go at this so then it's gonna have this nice length and then also to uh, I don't know if this is like an actual thing, like an actual art thing, but there's like a secondary line of action that like will always go with the first one. So as this goes this way, the hips and legs go the other way. Um, so it, this is your first one, I'm going to do this one in blue. The second line of action is going to go this way, where the legs start. And then uh, from there you just copy uh, what you see here. So this is going to be the back leg here. So the back leg uh, is going to be the one that's lifted up the most. Um, so you just want to round that out. And then I know you can't see it that much. but. Just follow that leg down, and then what I like to do, because I'm really lazy, uh, is I just put a little, <laughs> just use a little uh, triangle looking thing for the foot. You don't need to trouble yourself with the fine details. Like I said, this is all about um, laying out your blueprint for what the body's going to look like. Uh, so uh, you can just go ahead and do the second front leg here from the other hip is going to be the other way and then another little triangle and what do you know you got the basics for a form let me move this a little so we have some more space um, and if you want you can pop a little head on that 
pop a little head with a line indicating how the head is facing. So the head is facing this way. Just follow the eye line here uh, and just pop, pop a little line. And this is all I want you to focus on doing right now. This is going to take you a long way. <laughs> Feet and armpits are designed to times. <laughs> Honestly. I, 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 like, don't need this. Don't need that. Nope, nope, nope. Uh, but the, I honestly, armpits, once you know how to draw, like, uh, how to position an arm and how to draw it, it's actually pretty easy. Um, but yeah, for right now, this is all I want you to even fucking trouble yourself with. You don't want to do anything else. That's it. Um, and we'll go on to the next pose we have here. Hey, that's good to hear. I hope, uh, and after our stream is done, feel free to upload your, uh, uh, upload what you had done on the Twitter and then at me so I can see what you did. <laughs> so I can grade you accordingly and give everybody A's. Uh, but let's go on to the next pose here. And um, this is a very common pose. Uh, that I notice models like to do. Uh, I, I, I like it because, like I said, uh, very nice use of contrapposto. Uh, the, the, the shoulders and waist are in opposition of each other, so it's just a very nice pose to, to do. Um, so we'll go ahead and do this same, same way that we did the first one. Um, you want to find that line of action. So the line of action in here. Hey, what's good to hear? Good to hear. So let's see here. So the line of action here um, is going to be very simple. Um, I think a lot more simple than the first one. Uh, following this neckline down, uh, she's she's jutting her chest out. Um, so it's just going to be more of a line going forward like this. Uh, so let's see here. Um, where is it this way? Mm, see, sometimes I have, <laughs> I have tr problems trying to figure out which way the line of action is going. Um, I think it's jutting more forward out like this and then so the line of action is more like this if you're following the neckline as well. Uh, so we'll do a line jutting out like that and then a rounded line curving towards the right. It is a very nice pose. <laughs> um, I've actually done uh, live uh, figure drawing and this is usually uh, when they're posing for beginners is a very simple and easy pose to do. I actually think that contra uh, contrapostal poses are much easier to draw uh, than when uh, the model is standing straight. Uh, just because it's it's much more visually uh, uh, rhythmic. Uh, it's, I don't know, it's, it's nicer to draw than just line. Here we go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so, uh, yeah, so building off of this, you are going to put your shoulder and waistlines. So the shoulder is curving this way, while the waist is curving this way. Uh, and another good tip uh, that I like to tell people is exaggerate the, your lines as much as possible. Uh, even to the point where it looks like you're breaking bones. Um, this is just because uh, when you start to build final, finer details on top, uh, it, it, it's going to be much more toned down. Uh, so you want to get as exaggerated as you, can, as you can so you can get a much more expressive pose. Um, so go nuts with it honestly like if this is going like even slightly this way go nuts go this way uh, and uh, also with this you want to make sure that you're paying attention to 
your rib cage, like I said, just to, it's going to help you in the long run figure out where to position your lines. Uh, so rib cage is going to be here. Yes, sir. Pose over anatomy always looks best. Um, we could start getting into anatomy. I, I, <laughs> I took life drawing and we got, we got into like the names of the muscles and everything. Um, but I, I think we want to keep it, keep it pretty simple here. Uh, so this rib cage is going like this, jutting outwards also. So, yep. So longer length this way, and then shorter this way. Um, let me actually <laughs> let me fix this line here. And now we're gonna go to our legs. The length of our legs. Uh, I like to start with the leg that is uh, higher up than the other just because you can get a good idea uh, of how the legs are going to go. So if the leg uh, on this side, what is it? If a leg is jutting up, like is straight here, then the other one is usually going to be uh, more at rest just because the weight is on this leg and not this one, uh, if that makes any sense. So we are going to start with the leg. The names of them you're seeing the upper and <laughs> the bulgy boy, the heart sheep at the back. <laughs> I mean, if that's your name of the of the muscles, I'm not gonna start uh, stop you from calling them that. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Uh, so the line of action with the legs is going to be a little hard, uh, but I'll just go, go like this. So it's going to be like, this. especially with this because the legs are separate uh, separate from each other. Uh, so you're going to have to fill them up with two lines. So the first one's going to go this way, and the second one is going to go this way. And then you can you can find that midpoint at the pelvis here. Uh, so let's do it on our uh, actual drawing. Uh, so it is going to be starting from the hip, let's draw down, and uh, I don't know if you can t uh, see what I'm doing with the, these lines here with the legs, uh, but I tend to S curve it just because uh, you can find where the thigh starts, where the knee is, and where the calf starts with this. And then when you start building on top of that, you can just fill it in. Um, let's see here. And then get your funny little leg right there. It'll look better once you like <laughs> once you put in more details, but yeah, that's your funny little leg. Uh, let's get into the second one, which is curving down this way. And then you can find your pelvic point right here. Oh, I can't wait to see everybody drawing after uh, drawings after this. I'm gonna be, oh, I'm so excited. I'm gonna love every single one of them. Everybody gets A's. Yes, the eight trick. And another thing too, this is what I learned from my life drawing class um, is the torso is actually pretty easy to draw if you think of it as a sack of flour. Um, so a sack of flour actually looks like this, not too far off from the human torso. Um, and you can twist and bend it however. Uh, it's a flour sack or also uh, a bean um, is shaped because when you think about it, the bean, a bean is pretty similar to us. So this is a bean. This is gonna be your uh, the front of your torso, and this is your back. Pretty simple, right? Um, but here, this is our finished second figure drawing. Uh, let me put the head on this one also, uh, just because this one is very nice. Nice angled head. Aha! Everybody's beans. Don't let the government fool you. 
Uh, so let me go ahead and move this out of the way. <laughs> so, <laughs> I just realized I said that and just immediately went back to teaching mode. <laughs> but um, let me move this out of the way so we have some more room for the second drawing. <laughs> <laughs> let's see here so the next one another very simple this is a little bit um i would say it's more subtle contrapposto than the other two um it is a little bit more difficult just because of uh she's more leaning backwards so it's you're gonna have to um figure out how to get the angle on that um but we're just gonna approach it just as we did the last two um, so immediately we want to find our line of action. So it's going to be, let's see here, I didn't have my pencil out. So this one, pretty easy. If you follow down, there we go. That's going to be our line of action. And here is our rib cage, or the bottom of our rib cage. Um, <clears throat> and then not too much contrapposto happening in this one. It's, like I said, very subtle. Uh, the shoulder angle is going to be more... Uh, a, a, it's not completely flat, but it, it, it's it's not as angled as the these guys. Um, but the hips are definitely moving. <laughs> uh, so these are going to go upwards. Uh, with it shorter at this side rather than this side. Uh, so let's go ahead and tackle this. Let me make this a little bit sh smaller <laughs> so we have some more room. Whoop. Okay. Let me get out the, the ruler here. If I can find the button. There we go. Found it. So go ahead and tackle this. Our line of action is going to be more of this very subtle S-curve. Super duper subtle. Not as extreme as the other ones. Ending at this pelvic area here. And then we'll put in the shoulders. <laughs> they sure are! <laughs> Um, very subtle curve to the shoulders, uh, nothing too crazy, but like I said, uh, try to exaggerate the hell out of it. Um, doesn't matter if you're gonna go for cartoony or realistic, you wanna exaggerate the hell out of, the, out of your, uh, initial pose, uh, figure drawing. And, uh, once you get, start getting the hang of this, this is excellent warm-up work. Um, just so you can get your hand loose and ready to go. Uh, now we'll start with the, let me put in the rib cage just so I can get an indicator. So the rib cage, very bendy, very bendy, that's it. <laughs> uh, and then the hip. So it's going to be more like this C looking line here. Um, and then we just got to connect the dots. So this is going to go inward like that, and then connecting to the hip. And this goes inward like this, and then rounds to connect with the hip. Uh, let me know if I'm going too fast. Uh, just I, I just want to make sure that everybody uh, gets a chance to... Uh, uh, we, so we, we do this together. <laughs> we do or die. Um, but, uh, going on, okay, that's good, that's good, that's good. Uh, so going from here, we'll start with the leg here. This, uh, the leg closest to us here is going to be with the one with all the weight on it. As you can see, this one is jutting forward. Meanwhile, this one is, um, at rest. So the line of action here is going to look like this just because you want to get that hip that's um, coming out. And this back leg here is just going to be very easy. Um, nice little S-curve and then the, your little triangle for the feet. 
Uh, so let's do it on our figure here. Following the uh, following the hip, we're gonna go outward. You want to jut it outward just so you can capture that good pose. So jut it outward, ex uh, exaggerate as much as possible, and then follow the leg down, and then get your little triangle in there. And then for the back leg, more of an S curve. And bam! We can just put in our pelvis. And then connect the dots here. Why not? I'm feeling it. Let me actually lengthen this leg here. If you're doing this on uh, with pencil and paper, uh, don't be afraid to just like draw over it. Um, I like to draw, uh, I like to do figure drawing with a pen, actually, a pen or marker, um, just because you're not, you're not able to erase the marks that you've made. Um, so it, it gets you in the habit of making a mark and committing to it. And if you make a mistake, just draw right over it. Who's going to see it, you know? Uh, this is this this figure drawing is just for you. This is just for you to uh, to warm up and practice. There you go. And then let me put my little head right here. But she's looking downward a little bit, so you follow that eye line. She's like, ooh, <laughs> ooh, sassy. And there's our second one. Um, actually, with this one, I kind of want to go a little bit further and go. Uh, Listen, I know I said fuck the arms, but I, I'm kind of feeling the arms on this one just because they're in such a, a really expressive pose here. I actually really like it. Um, but with the arms, uh, everybody approaches them uh, differently. There is a... <laughs> I, I've seen this uh, quote-unquote hack. Uh, I'm not a big fan of it, but if you figure out a way to... Uh, <laughs> to to make it make sense, go for it. But I, I've seen people that start out with the hand position and then they just draw a line to the shoulder and then they bisect that and then they do it like this. It can be effective, but you can easily um, mess up the arm like that because what if you do it like just a year and then, I don't know. I kinda, I'm not a big fan of that. Um, with this arm here, uh, with arms, I like to pay attention to the negative space. So the negative space is going to be um, the shape that you see in between the, f uh, the figure itself and the arms. So if you can figure out um, if, yeah, exactly, um, there, it, it, it'll, it'll make no sense if there's any foreshortening. Um, so with this, I always subscribe to negative space, and this is really excellent too because she is holding the cloths here, so you can s distinctly see the space in between. Um, so we're going to go ahead and tackle that. Uh, we're going to focus only on the negative space. Uh, so from the shoulder, I like to put little rounds here just so you can see that they are rounded. Um, we're going to follow this negative space. So this is just going to be out and down. It's a little wonky, but you know, we're getting there. We're getting there. And I'll put a little ball for the hand. I'm not feeling like drawing hands right now. And then for the cloth, try to copy that negative space that you see there. Like I said, it's not going to come out pretty, never comes out pretty uh, when you first start. That's all for touching up and everything. So you do that little cloth and then this arm here is more in and then you see this little rectangle that's, uh, hold on I gotta burp. <laughs> oh, I almost threw, I almost threw up, but we are okay. <laughs> you, you're going to see this little rectangle here. So not much of the armor is showing as you can see on the picture. Uh, so I'm just going to put a little, I'm going to use a little circle 
here. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so glad everybody. <laughs> I'm so glad we're hyped for the burp. <laughs> but I'm just gonna use a little oval to signify this arm here. And then a funny little triangle. And look at that. Look at that. Oh, that's so perfect. Perfect uh, copy of that little negative space there. And then we're done with this drawing. I'm gonna go ahead and put this away. Um, I will say, I probably should have said this in the beginning, um, but according to some of my teachers, uh, the way that I approach figure drawing is very academic. So if you think of anything like outside of the box than me, I mean, go for it. Uh, you don't need to be super academic like me. You can go crazy with it. it it's it's your your drawing. Um, let's see here. Uh, should we do this one? Yeah, this one is a nice. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll do this one. We'll do this one. <clears throat> uh, so th with this one, it's a little bit different than our first two because she is. Um, her body is actually angled towards this way, um, so it's going to be a, a little bit different. You just need to take into um, take into account uh, how the body is going to look uh, when it's facing away from you instead of towards you. <clears throat> Hold on, I need some water. <coughs> Hydration time. Okay, I'm good to go. <coughs> Ooh, a lot of phlegm. Okay, let me get my collar here. I'll get them here. Thank you, thank you. I try very hard to make it as loud, um, loud, obnoxious, and uh, what's the word? <coughs> Yes, loud and obnoxious as possibly as possible. I just I just think everybody needs to hear it. <laughs> Gulu vomit is smart. <laughs> Maybe one day if I get enough subs. Uh, but <laughs> returning back to this figure right here. Um, look again. We're going to approach this as we usually do. Uh, start off with finding that line of action. So this one right here, pretty easy. Um, especially easy that because you can see her back here, so you just want to follow that line. So there you go. There's your line of action. Pretty easy. Um, there's a little bit of foreshortening here, so the uh, oh god, huh? I don't know why, but it feels like I got a burp, but nothing's coming out. Ugh. But <laughs> the shoulder line here is gonna be a little bit shorter. Than what we normally do just because her shoulder here is less visible than her shoulder here um, but there still is going to be quite the dramatic uh, curve to it so it's going to be facing more upwards this way and then with her hips um, <clears throat> thank yous so you got you got that burp out uh, there we go Okay, now with her hips, like I said, you just want to look for um, the position of the leg. Uh, this leg is more straight than this one, so all the way is going that way. So your hip is going to uh, want to go towards that. I'm so ah, I'm so glad everybody's rating my burps. <laughs> I'm gonna be fine. I'm just very gassy. I don't know what it is. Um, but yeah, with the hips going this way, and then you find your rib cage. I this is I think now you can see it on male models too. But usually your rib cage is going to be just below your breast. <laughs> Burping is part of the lesson. It's very integral, very important. Um, but yeah, you can usually find your rib cage just below the breast. Um, breast. 
and that's how you find your connecting parts. So let's go ahead and do it off to the side here. Uh, okay. So starting with our line of action, it's going to go like this, that's going to be the head, and then her body goes like so. And now we'll put in the shoulders, like I said. It's going to be a bit of a shorter line, but it's going to be at a much more dramatic uh, angle. And now with the rib cage facing that way, and her hip line going that way. And now we just put it all together. So uh, this is especially helpful that you can see her back here. This is I, I pr my preference is actually these types of poses where you can see the back, just because it's much easier to assess. It's much easier and much more like <laughs> visually appealing to me. Um, but where you can you can assess where to put that back line. Um, so this is just gonna go straight upwards like this. Uh, I'll do a little booby. Well, I'm, I'm feeling. Let's draw a little booby. So it's just gonna be a little curve, just like that. So we're just gonna fill it in like this. Ah, a little booby. And then just a curve in like this to connect to the waistline. And now we got our flower bag. This is our bean. Um, and then let's go ahead and continue with the legs. So, like I said, uh, this back leg here is carrying all the weight. So that one's gonna be uh, naturally a little bit uh, straighter than this one. So we'll go ahead and tackle this back leg here. It's gonna look like that S curve. So we'll go down and then the triangle for the foot. I do not have a back fetish. What? What? Hold on. Wait, 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 Okay, if we're gonna say I have a back fetish, get it right. It's specifically the lower back right here where you can see the, uh, uh, the butt dimples. I just really like butt dimples. That's it. Stop. <laughs> this is not how you cheat your professor. <laughs> Continuing, we'll do this front leg here. So this front leg is just going to be a little bit more bent than the back leg. So we'll follow the front part of the of the thigh here. Oh my god, you guys fucking <laughs> you guys threw me off my game. We'll <laughs> start with the um the top part of the thigh and then finish off with that calf and we have a very oh wow this this is such a nice contrapasta pose it's so nice i like this pose a lot a whole lot upper back muscular uh, mus uh muscles are really fucking great i i, I will admit that um I, I like me a lady that's beefed up in the back that yeah, you know, she does her push-ups. Um, but yeah, there we go. There's our pose. This one, I, I'm sorry, I'm gonna, like, <laughs> I'm gonna go nuts for a little bit here, but I just really like this pose. I can't believe I was gonna skip it. That came out really nice. <clears throat> Put that up there. Going on to the next one. Another little breather. So it is uh, from the side, just like the other one, so it's gonna be a little different. <laughs> I do. I just like muscles. They're just, they're just good to look at. Uh, where was I? So we're ha we have another pose that's from the side. You can clearly see the spine here, which is going to be really nice. <laughs> God 
goddamn Garlic's reading me like a fucking book. Yo, he's got the downloads. He checked me out of the goddamn library. Oh, God. Whew. But, um, with this, uh, this is a really easy pose. So that's gonna be, this is gonna be our line of action. Uh, with this being our leg here. This is a very nice pose, actually. Uh, so we'll start with our line. So it's going to be just this nice little curve uh, facing toward the left, or our left at least. Let me make this a little bit smaller so I can fit the whole figure on the page. Um, so going like this, uh, the, <laughs> the shoulder lines are going to be a little weird, shoulder and waist lines. So just like in the last, uh, last drawing, the shoulder lines is going to be a little bit more tame, a bit more subtle, uh, but that uh, waistline is going to jut upwards like this. So just make sure that this is in contrast to that. I could smell the face open. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> no! <laughs> Don't expose me like this. Uh, not when I'm trying to teach a lesson. Oh god. So let's go ahead and put in that shoulder line. <laughs> very subtle, very subtle, but it, you can see that there is a curve, slight curve to it. And then. Uh, our uh, rib cage, pretty simple. It's just gonna follow that. There we go. And then our waist is gonna jut upwards in um, contesting our shoulder line here. And we'll go ahead and put it together. Let's draw another little T. Just a nice little round facing that way. And then. We'll follow this down to the pelvis. This looks weird. I know it looks weird, but this is right. This is correct. All, all according to Kaycock. And then another round this way. And this goes inwards like that, following that back. Titty do be teardrop shaped. So if you actually want to like get into titty, titty's gonna usually look like this. Not, not like this. Don't be like this. This is not titty. It could be titty if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna look at you from the sidelines and be like, hmm, yeah, okay. That's a, that's a watermelon in there. That's a watermelon in your shirt. But this is usually how titty is shaped going from the chest here. Huh? Nice little tidbit. But, uh, <laughs> sorry, I, I have very, very extreme opinions on TD. <laughs> These are my old man TDs. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so let's go ahead and draw the legs. <laughs> so the legs. So all of the weight is on this leg, so it is naturally going to be straighter than the other. So we'll follow this front line of the... I'm going to move this up a little bit more. I don't think I'm going to have... Oh no, I'm going to make it smaller because I don't have enough space for it. <laughs> so go ahead and follow that front, that front line from the thigh. And it'll curve all the way down and to the foot. Yes, 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 yes. They're all titty. All titty is teardrop shaped. And I will, I will fight to the ends to that. I have very extreme opinions on on drawing titty. Uh, let's see here. Uh, and now for this front leg, it's going to be a little, I think this is going to be fun. I like drawing this one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this this way. 
Oof. So it's going to be a very simple, yeah, like a little, a little, a little one of that. And then there you go. You got your, uh, you got your, uh, what is this called? <laughs> you got your figure. Um, yeah, this is great. <laughs> uh, usually, I, I have all covered models just because I want to keep this say so. Not to say that if you use mo uh, nude models, it isn't say so. Um, but I also don't want to get a. I, I don't want YouTube to uh, see Titty and be like, <gasps> that's not Christian! <laughs> uh, but yeah. Oh, I do like Kulo. Broly Kulo? Has anybody ever seen Broly Kulo? I enjoy Bro Broly Kulo. Um, if you don't know what that is, don't Google it. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, there is our second uh, figure. Very nice. Very good pose. Good poses all around. That one's very... Not the most developed, but it's very good. Heavy, huh? <laughs> now you're making me think of really cool. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> Y'all, let me tell you what, though. If you have seen Broly Kulo and you've seen him trying to carry that cross, let me tell you what, that is excellent deadlift position. <laughs> Broly is broccoli, huh? Um, what was I gonna do? Completely lost my train of thought. Uh, let's do this. Let's do this uh, figure from the back. Uh, now this is a very straight. Oh god. Okay. This is a very straight pose. Um, so not a lot of contrapposto, um, but that's okay. You gotta mix it up a little, you know. So with this pose. Uh, the line of action is actually going to go straight down. So we'll go ahead and do it straight down. Let's see here. And I also think it's very important to draw models that are of uh, different body types just so you have um, the experience um, of just tr trying out different shapes and sizes. Up, uh, same. <laughs> Straight down. We're not gaying up just yet. Gay up would 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 be more like this. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, shoulders. Go straight like this, and so do the hips. Although I believe that the hips do, would have a little bit of a curve to them just because um, this foot is a little bit more angled than this one. So maybe just a little bit of a curve on the waistline here. Oh, just you wait, I actually have animal pictures ready. So I'm just gonna be, I'm, you know, just, just you wait. <laughs> um, so let's go ahead and put in, oh yeah, and then our rib cage. So our rib cage is going to curve like this. Or like this. Which way do I want to put it? <laughs> um, I'll put it like this, just because she is doing a very um, forward facing uh, a pose here. Ooh, you stuck my head on the body now. <laughs> yeah, I got I got one of my brethren in here. That's me. That's a little picture of me, actually. You could tell because I have my tongue out. Um, but let's go ahead and finish this one right here so very straight forward straight for straight line for the <clears throat> uh, 
straight line for the shoulder line and then put in our rib cage here and then just a slight bend slight bend here to the waistline yeah that line does look kind of scared I don't know why but it was the best picture of a wine I could get. I was trying to find one that was like in action, but who knows? <laughs> hey, what does that mean? Um, so we'll go ahead and connect the lines to according to the R model here. So there we go. And now we're gonna go and move on to the legs. Very simple. Um, I'm going to start with this uh, with this leg that's most forward for her, just because all the weight is on it. So let's go ahead and go like this, and then the calf, and then her foot is kind of uh, going this way, and then the back leg. Which is going, of course, going to be a little bit longer just because it's closer to us, so the viewer. Ugh. Let me tell you what, I'm gassy. <laughs> and there we go. Very basic pose, but very nice nonetheless. Let's go ahead and move this over. And then we're going to do our last pose here, which we already have the guidelines out for it, so we're just going to go ahead and follow those. So it's just going to be this nice S curve following our spinal cord there. So S this way, and then goes outward like that and then we'll follow our shoulders and then our waistline and also our rib cage. So we're going to go ahead and connect all of those accordingly. Bam! We got a flower sack. Now to move on to the legs. So this leg is carrying all the weight, you can tell, because it is straight. Um, so we'll go ahead and start from there. Uh, I think with this one, just because of how the leg is positioned, I'm going to start with the back of the thigh as opposed to the front, because I think the back here has a bit more information than the front. Um, so we'll go ahead and do this. Just, I, I just want to draw ass. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and do that. And then we'll follow the front of the shin down into a little tippy toe. Like that. Very, very easy little curve there. Um, let me go ahead and move this up a little bit. And then the back leg, same thing. Um, I think with the back leg, I'm going to start with the front of the thigh, like I said, just because there's a little bit more information to gather from it. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and put that in and also tippy toe. And then if you want to draw tippy toes, you just, instead of a triangle, follow, try to follow the, uh, the curve of the foot like that. Uh, and then you get a nice little tippy toe like that. Nice little tippy toe pose. Very good, very good. I actually enjoyed this pose a lot. <laughs> I think it's very nice. And then we'll put another little head here. She's like a back ass. Like, oh, hello. <laughs> hello, I didn't see you there. And there we go. We're done with all of our people poses. Um. And once you get this down, um, 
first of all, you want to get it down taking your time with it. And then when you actually want to start doing like intermediate stuff, like, uh, <laughs> uh, when you start really getting to like intermediate stuff and just using this as a warm up, um, I, you actually want to start doing this as quickly and as rapidly as you can. Um, uh, my, my old teacher that I started doing figure drawing with, he would actually fucking crack down on this. Uh, he would have a timer set for, I think, uh, I want to say five, five or ten seconds. And within those five or ten seconds, we needed to look at the model and be able to have the line of action, have the shoulder lines, and have the hip line down. Um, as long as we had those, we met the criteria for passing. Um, a good tool to use for rapid fire uh, figure drawing would be a website called lineofaction.com. Uh, they have a classroom setting actually uh, where it will vary the lengths of a, uh, of, a of a picture of a model so you can go ahead and either do it really fast and then they'll have one that's like a minute long so you can take your time on that. Uh, it's a very good resource. I used to use it all the time as a kid. Uh, I still use it every now and then when I get the chance to start doing some figure drawing. Uh, <clears throat> oof, excuse me. And then if you really want to get into it, if you're super interested in figure drawing uh, and anatomy, I highly, highly recommend George Bridgman's Constructive Anatomy. Uh, you can actually read it for free online. I, I don't have the link to it, but I know you can read it for free online. There's a PDF of it. Uh, and a very good way of practicing. It, it's very good showing uh, the more fine details of the body. So he'll go over uh, drawing muscles, drawing the face, how to draw, uh, how to draw feet and fingers, um, everything like that. <clears throat> uh, he's a great. It, it's a little rough just because it's extremely academic drawings. Uh, so a lot of the faces are a little rough to look at, but it's still a very good resource. Uh, I keep that book with me a lot. Um, yeah, you know, if you want to pick it up, have it physical. That's always nice. Uh, but I, it's much more accessible online. There's a there's a whole PDF of it that you can look at. Uh, and to to oh excuse me, and to practice drawing with that. Um, I actually uh, look at the, this is from what my second figure drawing teacher taught us, uh, was to actually copy the images that were shown in a book. Um, and it was just very good at training yourself to look for those very, like, th those subtleties in the human figure. Um, but that's for like, if you really want to get into figure drawing. Um, but just for like practice and stuff, for practicing how the figure works, uh, how to pose, uh, line of action is a really good resource. Um, and with this, all of this information, um, you can take it a step further, start drawing animals. It's honestly, it's basically the same exact thing. Uh, see, you can find the line of action with all of these guys. So it's just going to be this line here. Boom, line of action. This bird, boom, line of action. Actually, it's gonna be more like this. <laughs> boom, line of action. This platypus, he was eating a worm. His line of action is gonna be really easy because platy platypi are just flat. <laughs> His line of action is just gonna be that. And with this, oh, sorry. With this deer here who is very much uh, in action, boom. Line action. And then same thing, you can find their shoulders, uh, waistline, waistline, shoulders, shoulders, waist. Yo, yo, the worm, the worm's line of action is a little crazy though. Uh, and with this guy, uh, it'd be like, this guy would be kind of weird. Mm, more like, more like this, I guess, because you just want to follow the arms. 
Um, but yeah, once you get once you get like the human body down, you start. I usually start with the human body just because it's really, you know, you're you're people. Um, <laughs> we're we're all peoples, so we can do that ourselves. Oh, another really good trick um, to figuring this out is actually doing it yourself. Um, you can look into a mirror if you want. Um, but it, it's optional, honestly. Uh, if you just do it yourself, you'll feel how that how that motion works in you. And then I don't know how to explain. It. It's just it'll it'll help you understand why the body is moving the way it is, and then it'll help translate that into uh, into a drawing. <laughs> We're just having a bad day. <laughs> right as far as everybody knows your people <laughs> um but then another really helpful thing if you want to get into this more um if available seek out uh in-person drawing uh figure drawing sessions uh, i've done tons of them uh, as a class but i know you can get it a little cheaper than going to a community college um, if you just, I don't know, maybe it's on like Facebook groups, you'll, you can probably find them online. Um, but basically what they'll do is uh, it'll be a bunch of artists that get together um, and they get, uh, what is it, they, they all round up a bunch of money um, to help pay for a model to come in. Um, and with the model, most of these drawing sessions, the model will be nude. So if you're not used to that, uh, if you're not comfortable with it, don't do it. But uh, it's actually not, it's not that bad. Uh, you just, you know, you just need to treat the model with respect. Uh, make sure that the model is as comfortable as they can be. Um, and they'll, they'll let you draw you. And if you get a really good model, I've had a model who was a dancer and he did the weirdest poses ever. And I thought it was awesome. He like got up onto a chair and then like angled his body. So what is it? His legs were up in the air and then his face was like down. It was so cool. You like guinea models are so cool. <laughs> oh yeah. Definitely be safe. If you, if you take that route, make sure you wear a mask, make sure you get your distance. Uh, and like I said, just make sure that the model is as comfortable as possible can be. Uh, I think models nowadays might be a little hard to come by, uh, but I don't know if they've been doing it since COVID started. Uh, but if the once uh, lockdown and everything is finished, definitely I would recommend trying that out. Uh, like I said, it's a little weird at first, but you you, you kind of get used to it. You just focus more on the drawing. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It is a little funny, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean, usually they, um, they, they'll they come in and then, like, they'll, they'll bring their own robe and everything, so... Uh, but, yeah. Uh, I think... That concludes today's session of drawing the figure. Um, I think next episode is going to be, our next session is going to be, I can't remember, either Friday or Saturday. Um, we are going to be looking at faces next week and how to construct the face. So I, ho I hope everybody is excited for that. Uh, uh, make sure that, make sure to post your drawings on Twitter and then at me so I can see it. I would love to. I would absolutely love to see them and then give you a big, big fat A. Uh, but I hope everybody had fun. I hope everybody learned something new today. Uh, and you take this new knowledge uh, further on your uh, brand new art career. Congratulations, you're all artists now. Uh, and, you know, take that as far as you can. And push it. Because art is all about practice, practice, practice. Um, so, huh, let's see. I don't really have anything else to say. So thank you, every, thank you everybody for coming. Uh, I really enjoyed this. I'm glad everybody had fun. Uh, and I, I'll, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Uh,